For thousands of years, the Cherokee lived in the Appalachian Mountains. In fact, long before there was even a United States. They farmed, they traded, they built a nation of their own with what they had. But when scientists looked into their DNA, something didn't add up. The results didn't match the story everyone thought they knew. Some of their genes looked out of place. Too different, too strange. It all started when scientists believed they already knew exactly where all Native American DNA came from. They said it started on a path called Beringia in Siberia, where people crossed into Alaska about 15,000 years ago. When the Ice Age ended, their children spread through the North and South America, carrying just five main maternal DNA types, which were A, B, C, D, and X. That pattern showed up in every native group from Canada to Chile. It was basically the genetic signature of the first Americans. So when scientists started checking Cherokee DNA, they expected the same results. But what they found wasn't that at all. Instead of just those five markers, some Cherokee-descended families had DNA that didn't belong in that group at all. The strangest part was that these new DNA markers looked like they came from across the ocean, from places like the Mediterranean, North Africa, and even parts of the Middle East. It didn't make any sense at first. Some people online jumped straight to wild theories about lost tribes or ancient sailors crossing the Atlantic before Columbus. Others blamed the later mixing with Europeans, but none of it perfectly added up to why their DNA was so unique. Then the deeper scientists looked, the more confusing it got, leading straight to the DNA plot twist no one saw coming. When DNA companies started testing Cherokee-descended families, some tests showed letters T, U, J, H, and even a strange form of X that looked more European than Asian. These DNA types usually belong to people from places like Spain, Greece, North Africa, and even the Middle East. So how did it get into the DNA of the Cherokee? Some conspiracy theorists on YouTube and discussion groups online said it proved that ancient sailors reached America before Columbus. Others said it linked the Cherokee to the lost tribes of Israel. Scientists rolled their eyes but also had to admit that something odd was going on. The markers were real, but where they came from wasn't clear. Researchers then went ahead to dig into the timeline and they noticed something. Many Cherokee families had mixed with Scottish, Irish, and English settlers as early as the 1700s. There were trade posts, shared villages, and marriages that merged different cultures and genes. In those years, communities formed where Native women married European men, passing both heritages to their children. Those same children would later grow up Cherokee, speak the language, follow the traditions, and be listed on the Cherokee records. So it made complete sense that European haplogroups like T, U, or H showed up generations later. But what confused things even more was that not every Cherokee family had those markers. Only a few did. That meant it wasn't proof of some massive secret migration. It was more like proof that real people in real families had simply lived side by side for centuries and mixed naturally just like everywhere else on Earth. But the Internet didn't want calm explanations. People started spinning the data into wild stories of Phoenician traders, Egyptian priests, lost Welsh princes, and even survivors of Atlantis. It got messy fast. Scientists warned that small DNA samples can't change the history of a whole cultural group of people, especially when family trees are tangled by centuries of intermarriage forced removal, and broken records. But each time experts tried to advise against speculations, the theories just increased. While the drama spread across the internet, one question still stayed unanswered. How did the Cherokees survive all this history of wars, loss, removal, and still keep their identity alive through everything that came next? When the U.S. government passed the Indian Removal Act in 1830, everything changed overnight for the Cherokee. Soldiers came in and forced families to leave their homes with almost no warning. They were marched west in horrible cold across hundreds of miles in what became known as the Trail of Tears. 
Around 4,000 of them died from hunger, disease, and exhaustion before they even reached Oklahoma. Families were torn apart, villages scattered, and old records were destroyed. Along the way, many Cherokee had no choice but to mix with other tribes or even marry non-native settlers just to survive. Decades later, new laws like the Dawes Act and the Curtis Act just made things worse. These laws split tribal land into private property and demanded names on government rolls, not clan records. That single act shattered the old Cherokee system and mixed up family identities forever. Bloodlines blurred, names got changed, and by the early 1900s, the Cherokee gene pool had already absorbed bits of Irish, English, African, and Scottish DNA. When modern scientists looked at Cherokee DNA, they realized it had signs of all that chaos. There was no single clean line to follow. Each family had its own story of the hardship their ancestors faced through a different, different genetic mix. Some Cherokee descendants today have European haplogroups like H or T because their ancestors married settlers during or after removal. Some have traces of African ancestry in their DNA because of contact between Native and Black communities in the Southeast. A few even have Spanish or Mediterranean markers that likely came from early explorers or traders. Then add in generations of forced relocation, where families were moved, remarried, or misrecorded, and it's honestly no wonder the Cherokee DNA has different markers. But here's where it gets a bit tricky. Even with all that mixing, most Cherokee DNA still traces straight back to the same ancient Native American roots shared across the continent. Those original haplogroups, A, B, C, D, and X, are still there, stronger than ever. The big question scientists have to deal with now is how those rare old-world DNA haplogroups got in before anyone remembers them. Some experts say they came from settlers, while others are convinced small ancient migrations might have brought traces of European-like DNA long before Columbus, but no one has solid proof yet. A few DNA companies made things worse by using tiny samples and giving people results that looked mysterious but meant nothing. Some families even started chasing rumors of lost civilizations instead of understanding how DNA really works. And if you think that's the end of the story, wait until you see how this DNA drama turned very political. The Cherokee Nation has always been firm about one thing. Being Cherokee has nothing to do with what a lab says about your DNA. To them, true Cherokee citizenship doesn't come from legal roles, family lineage, and community roots that go back generations. It's about actually being part of a living culture. Tribal law decides who belongs, not ancestry websites. Many tribal leaders have even warned that people using DNA tests to prove Native ancestry do more harm than good because it turns identity into a science project. DNA can only trace where certain ancestors might have lived thousands of years ago. It can't measure belonging, ceremony, or the stories passed around the fire. Even among real Cherokee citizens, there's a wide range of DNA types because history was messy. Different families mixed and bloodlines crossed, but that culture stayed unbroken. The Southeast was never quiet or simple. The Cherokee shared trade routes, wars, and marriages with the Choctaw, Creek, Chickasaw, and Seminole. For centuries, they moved through each other's lands, swapping crops, words, and even family ties. Their DNA shows the same thing. Different native ancestry mixed with bits from European settlers, enslaved Africans, and even Spanish traders who came through the Gulf. Ancient migration patterns also played a major part. That's why you see similarities between southeastern tribes even today. Instead of being isolated, they were part of a huge network of people constantly moving, marrying, and rebuilding through wars and colonization. Then came the internet chaos. The moment those odd DNA results went public, people went wild. 
YouTubers started claiming the Cherokee were descendants of Israelites, Celts, Atlanteans, and even ancient Egyptians. Some swore old Cherokee symbols matched Middle Eastern ones. Others said the lost tribes of Israel landed in Tennessee. Still, through all that online noise, the real Cherokee history remained. Their government runs strong, their schools teach the Cherokee language, and elders still pass down stories that survived, forced removals and generations of loss. DNA might show hints of old migrations, but what truly matters is the living nation of Cherokee itself. <laughs>